Hello and welcome back once again to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Today we're going to continue and finalize our Ford 4.0 liter sock timing series with part four, which is basically putting all the covers back on, getting the engine ready to go back into the vehicle. So we're going to put on the valve covers, front cover, water pump, thermostat housing, and of course the upper and lower oil pan. Now most of this is pretty basic. I'll put all the torque specs and sequences down below so you get a good reference and you can follow along of course. But the one part that's critical is the upper oil pan installation. There's a lot of key points on here. I'm gonna walk you through it in detail so we get it done, we get it done right. You gotta flush the back out, you gotta set the inserts, and then you gotta torque it down in sequence or else you're gonna have problems once the engine's back into the vehicle. Main reason why is because it's a structural member of the engine, so it's very critical we do it right. So a lot left to do. Let's go ahead and get it done and get it back into the vehicle. Now installing the front cover is fairly straightforward. What I like to do is put a little bit of engine sealant around these coolant ports because they're usually pitted. I like to fill them in a little bit on both sides, but it also will hold our gasket in place while we're taking them both over here together to bolt it up to the front of the engine. Now we know that the bolts are different. And there, there's a couple different ones and they're just all over the place on here. That is why we took the picture earlier, so they all go back in the right spot. Now, once they're all back in the right places, we can torque them down to 14 foot-pounds. Just kind of jump around. There's no torque sequence, just 14 foot-pounds, and just kind of jump it around and do it evenly. Now, the water pump is basically the same procedure. I'll go through and I'll check the areas where there's any kind of pitting. Put a little engine sealant on there. Put the gasket in place so it holds it and then we'll bolt the water pump up to it. Now the bolts in the water pump, same thing, you just jump around, there's no torque sequence, so let's do them nice and even, 89 inch pounds. Next, I will install the thermostat housing back to uh, the cylinder head here. Now if you took it off, make sure you replace the gasket down here, and of course these are known for cracks at the seam of the housing. I always change this bypass tube right here going down, it's usually swollen, and I'll always change the thermostat and o-ring inside of here. So what you want to do is keep all the clamps up here, get it all in place, and kind of bring it down together to the water pump here. And then we can go ahead and start these bolts. Get them aligned. We're gonna torque these three bolts up here to 98 inch pounds. Once that's done, we can adjust our hose and put our lower clamp on. With the front end back together, we can go ahead and start installing all our roller followers. Same way you took them out, make sure you're in base circle so it's easier to get in and out and just use the special tool. Now once they, they're all in place, good to go, we can go ahead and put our valve cover back on with a new gasket and we're gonna torque down the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Just kind of jump around in a crisscross pattern and then I like to recheck the torque after it's settled a little bit. Once that is done on both banks, we can flip this thing over and get the oil pans in place and sealing up and drying. All right, now for the engine cradle. As you can imagine, just like everything else in this engine, there is a very specific procedure to installing one of these. And one of the very first things you want to do is to run these standoffs, I guess you could call them, down. You see how they're sticking out and they're past flush? What you want to do is run them back down till they're flush or even sub flush. Okay, it's a 716 hex, and you can see now it's sub flush. So you want to do that to all six of these in here, and we'll adjust these back up later on once the cradle is torqued down. Now, once you do that, you want to make sure your, your deck surface here is nice and clean. I mean, super clean, all the bolt holes, some brake clean on here, and get it super clean. And then we're going to install, we're going to put down some engine sealant right here, a bead of it right here, right here, and then over here at the joint, and then right here, 
bead right here, right here, and then again at this joint. We're gonna lay that gasket down, and then we're gonna put the pan down and start bolting it in around the outside here. Only finger tight because we need to align it to the back side of the block. And this is how it looks. So we're gonna put our sealant here, nice healthy bead right here. There we go. We'll get our bead up here all the way across. Same thing right here. And this will just seal all those weird areas of the pan gasket. So there's no leaks here in the future. And then we'll lay this gasket on here. And these front studs on here will help us align. So get it pretty darn close. There, there, there. And then we'll set it back here in the groove. There we go. Make sure it's even on both sides. It will bring it down and squish once we get the pan on here and all that. And make it work. There we go. And then we can take our pan with all our standoffs, set sub flush, ready to go. I could just kind of lay it onto here. And again, those front studs will help align it. There we go. Make sure this gasket falls into the groove in the front and the rear so it can squish and retain it. All right. So at this point, you can just go around and start putting in all your 10 mil bolts. Again, finger tight, couple of threads. And then of course back here is the two uh, Torx bolts. Now once all the cradle bolts are in, hand tight, nice and loose, we need to align the back side of the cradle with the back side of the block. We need to be flush. And the reason being is these two bolts up here are for the bell housing. So if this is off and it's under flush or it's protruding, you're gonna have a problem, you'll crack it. So what you wanna do is make sure it's flush with the block up to this point right here. So what I use is just something like this real basic straight edge and it should be darn close I mean mine I didn't even align it and it was pretty darn close let me check this other side and we're gonna check it right here where it's machined flat all the way down to the block so if it's flat up here and it's touching down there we're good to go Okay. This is very critical because if you don't do this before you tighten it down, you're going to crack it. Okay, we're good to go there. At that point, once it's at that point, you can start tightening. Okay, we'll just kind of jump around, snug them down. Start in the middle. Get it in place. And then we'll check that once again. You don't want to have problems. This looks real good. And right there looks real good. Now at this point, we can go ahead and tighten all these bolts down. Again, there's no torque sequence, uh, but you just want to kind of jump around and torque them down evenly. Now these bolts are 124 inch pounds. These torques bolts are 89 inch pounds 
and then the two nuts up front are 89 inch pounds so it's kind of jump around and tighten it down evenly and then once everything settles and you torque them all down go back over them to accommodate for squish you know for the gasket itself relaxing and they'll be good to go there now once all these bolts are torqued down and retorqued, we can go ahead and thread these inserts back down till they touch the main caps. So you just put your 7 16 in there and you're going to tighten them back down 27 inch pounds. Now once all these are set in here for support, we can go ahead and start putting all our bolts back in. Now these two front ones here are external so we need to use these gasketed washers. And luckily the Felpro kit uh, for the upper oil pan kit comes with them. So it's really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and put these bolts in by hand, get them all started all the way along. And this will finish the cradle installation. You can see it's a very specific procedure, uh, you know, for this cradle, but it is a structural member of the engine too so it's just the way this engine is so we're gonna get all these in by hand so we know we're good to go and then we can start the torquing sequence now the torque procedure for this is a two-step sequence so at first we're going to torque all of these in sequence to 133 inch pounds to get them set and then we're gonna go through the same sequence and torque them to 25 foot-pounds. I'll put the diagram for the sequence down below. All right, and finally, we can start installing our lower oil pan. Don't forget your pickup, and also make sure you clean it out. There's gonna be a lot of plastic debris in there if your guide's broke. Remember, this bolt is captured. So we need to kind of work it on here and start threading it all at the same time so we don't cross thread, it's kind of weird. Get that going. So I'll do this by hand and make sure it's straight. Like so, looks good. And then we'll bring them down together. There we go. It's a weird setup. Make sure the other side's pushed down all the way without cracking it. And just snug this by hand. Now our gasket actually snaps in with these little nipples right here all the way around. It snaps into the lower pan. Uh, so once that's snapped in and cleaned up, we can go ahead and just lay it on here. No sealants required. It's one of the easiest parts of this whole job. So let's go around again and put these in by hand so we don't cross thread anything. And then once they're in a few threads, you can just kind of jump around and torque them to 80 inch pounds. All right, one final item here is the crankshaft dampener. Now these, in case you didn't know it already, are prone to separating on the inside. It has a rubber dampener on the inside and the whole thing will start flopping around and you get a horrible vibration from the engine. So let's stick your finger in here and try to move it, make sure it's all solid inside of there. Otherwise, we can just put it on. I clean the outside, put a little grease on it. No sealant on the keyway like most of the Fords, okay? And we're just gonna line up the keyway and we'll get it started at first by hand so we know what's going. And then you can simply take a sledge like this and gently tap it on far enough so that we can get the bolt threaded, a couple threads, and pull it in, suck it in. Just a little bit like that, and it'll go on far enough to get that bolt started. Now, once the bolt is threaded in there, a couple of threads, we can go ahead and just zip it down with an impact until it's fully set in there. Really make sure it's set, and then we're gonna back it off. Like so. Just put it in there very light. Then we're gonna torque the bolt to 40 foot pounds, and then torque it an additional 90 degrees. And that'll set the crankshaft bolt. 
Now this part is up to you, but I always change spark plugs when I'm this far into an engine. Usually it comes in with the drivability concern and the plugs are usually fouled in some way anyways. So make sure you clean out the spark plug wells and either install new or put your old ones back in uh, so we can get the engine ready for installation into the truck. Now the final step is to reinstall the flex plate onto the back of the engine. Now if you are replacing the rear main seal like I did, it's a fairly simple process now that it's out of the vehicle. Uh, you're simply going to screw a screw into the seal, as you see here, and then for me, I just literally yanked on that screw and it came right out all together like that. Clean it up on the inside there, grease it up, and then your new seal from Felpro comes with this installation sleeve that will slide it over uh, the crankshaft back here without damage, and that'll fully set into there. There's a stop behind there. Then make sure your, your spacer and of course your dowel pins are back in, very, very important. And we can go ahead and start installing our spacer for the flex plate, okay? Now on this one, all the bolts are evenly spaced. A lot of times there's always one that is off. So on this one, this particular model year, 05 Ranger, they're all the same, okay? So you simply start bolting it back up on there. I like to use a little bit of Loctite on those bolts and there is a torque sequence and a pattern, you know, a spec, two-stage tightening spec for this rear flex plate. It's very, very critical. You don't want that coming apart and going down the road. I'll post that information down below in the video description. And there you have it. As you can tell, based on my four-part series and all the detail I went into, timing this engine is very, very complex. It's so complex, in fact, that even experienced technicians generally won't attempt the timing process on this engine, mainly because the workshop manual is very vague, and then the video procedures of this are very, very poor out there. So this is the first one that I've seen that goes into this much detail and shows you real world areas that you're gonna fight and fuss on, taking stuff out and putting it back in. Speaking of putting the engine back into the vehicle, um, when you go to put the engine back into the vehicle, it's pretty basic, basically the same thing reversal of removal you know just bolts right in same thing uh, once you get everything back together and you're ready to fire the engine don't leave the crankshaft sensor disconnected and then crank the engine for 30 seconds at a time allowing for the starter to cool until you get oil pressure on the gauge there that'll ensure the whole engine is primed and of course the tensioners are pumped up so there's no problems when you go to start it on there and then once it is primed you can go ahead and connect that crank sensor sensor back up and fire it and you're gonna have a perfect brand new sounding 4.0 liter sock under the hood that's all for now i hope to help you fix your ford yourself see you next time guys